Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to look at groundwater. Not just how groundwater is formed from rain and, and trapped by the different rocks that are there, uh, but also uh, groundwater that comes out of the ground. So springs and, and um, at least the, the infrastructure under the ground for, for geysers and for springs and for, for fountains. Uh, so let's look at some of the examples. So we need to first start about uh, talking about the hydrosphere, which of course is all the water on the earth. And uh, fresh water is not most of the water. Most of the water is salt water in the oceans. But fresh water is totally necessary for life. Um, I can't drink salt water. You can't drink salt water. Um, most living things cannot live in in salt water. Uh, there, of course, are ocean animals that can live in salt water, but most cannot. And fresh water is held um, mostly in frozen form. So glaciers and uh, ice packs in the Antarctica and Greenland uh, specifically account for most of the fresh water. Now there is fresh water in the ground, uh, that's all fresh water, so stored in wells and aquifers, and also in the air. So as water evaporates, given enough energy, it evaporates into the air and uh, can form clouds and then eventually precipitate so you have kind of a cycle of water where you have evaporation, uh, condensation where it comes back down into liquid water and then precipitation as it falls back uh, to the ground. Infiltration is the idea that, that water that's falling from the sky soaks into the ground and then that ground water um, can fill up aquifers, fill up wells, etc. So that would become groundwater from falling from falling um, precipitation. In terms of, of how wa uh, the ground stores water, it's stored in between the particles. So if the ground is made up of very uh, large particles and you have big voids where the water is, uh, where you have this, this, this is called porosity. So the amount of, of space inside the um, rock itself would be pores, and then these inter, inter spaces in between the different uh, sediments. So you can have small or large depending on the size of the sediment and quick, either quickly draining or holding on to water. So small uh, particles like, like sand, etc., can hold on to water uh, longer than large rocks could. The zone of saturation is the area that um, essentially fills with water um, inside the material, inside the rock pores. And so you have a, an area that of ground where the water percolates through called the zone of aeration. That's air. And then the water table sits below it. So when it rains on the ground, you have the soil is, is wet, normally the clays or whatever's in the soil, and then it'll percolate through the ground into some layer uh, called an aquifer. So the water table is this area inside, the, inside this percolation zone uh, or the saturation zone where the water uh, sits. And it is, it is uh, completely full. All of, the, all of this area, uh, every one of the pores in between all of the rocks are full of water and this is called the water table. So the water table is essentially the, the layer or the, the, the difference between the, air, the zone of aeration, which has mostly air in between the particles, and the zone of saturation, which has uh, the water that's filling this. And water can move uh, through something called capillary action. Uh, so for instance, if you have little spaces in between these particles, the smaller they are, uh, uh, together where the, there's a smaller area for the water to be, water can actually be drawn up uh, above the water table. And so, so uh, the pore spaces above the water cable can be, uh, have water in them just because of the sizes of the particle. Now the water table can be very deep, it can be very shallow. A lot of times it has to do with how much water of course is falling on it and then also whether or not it's sitting on a rock 
that can't have water through it. So if you have a um, like a basement rock, say like the bottom of a swimming pool where water is sitting on top of it, uh, then that's an impermeable rock and you can end up with water sitting on top of it. So the permeability of a material is whether or not water can pass through it. And some, some can pass very readily, totally, totally easy for water to move through, and some are considered to be impermeable uh, to water. And the more impermeable a rock layer is under the water table, the more likely that water will sit above it. Now, if you have an impermeable stone, these stones are called um, aquitards, and um, an aquitard is a is a layer of impermeable rock or semi-permeable rock that can hold water above it. And then an aquaclude are um, a impermeable rock, totally impermeable, that water would absolutely sip above. So you can have layers of water and no water and water depending upon what is the, the permeability of that rock. Is it able to make water flow through it? Is it acting like a sieve? or is it acting like a foundation layer, like the bottom of a pool? Now, when you get into the idea of springs, um, springs is when you have the water table exposed to the surface, and that, and we'll talk about that in, in, uh, in a moment, but this picture is pretty cool. Uh, cool. It, an aquifer, remember, is a zone of, of saturation inside where water is in the material, and then these aquacludes are these impermeable stones and it is possible that you can trap water in between layers of impermeable rock. So if you see here you've got the mountains which are sandstone or something impermeable and then a region where any water that falls in this region can go down into this uh, almost trapped um, vein of water if you want to think about it. So springs we mentioned is any time that that groundwater is exposed to the surface. So if you have an, an, uh, the water table above the surface, that's a spring. Now sometimes springs come out like a flowing fountain. Other times they just seep out like a, like a wet spot in, in, uh, on your property. So these discharges of water is called a spring. And you can have a couple different types of springs. Okay, so springs can come out of the side of a mountain. So for instance, imagine that you have a mountainside and along the middle of that mountain, you've got a layer of impermeable rock. Well, any water that's above that rock can't get any further down. So it will run along the top of that rock until it gets to the side of the hill and it'll come out sometimes as a waterfall or something like that, or as a, actually a fountain. Uh, you can have warm springs and even hot springs uh, depending upon whether you have uh, breaks or cracks or faults in the rock and how far down they go and how heated that the water that's falling down into these cracks can be. Uh, you can have um, even, even geysers. Uh, this is a picture of the Jefferson Springs. That's in uh, Warm Springs, Virginia, not very far from here. And, um, and these, uh, this is warm at that area and then a little farther up the road um, it's actually hot so hotter than a hot tub. A geyser is when you have a heat source uh, low enough to where you have a a void inside the rock that can fill with water from the water table and then get heated to boiling. As it gets heated to boiling it actually kind of erupts out of the vent and as it does, then it takes time for the water table to seep back into that void, be heated again. And so it's, it's almost on a clockwork basis of, of these geysers. Uh, people love geysers.